is creative nonfiction. And this will breathe life into your writing. So thank you for joining me. Welcome to Using Fiction Techniques in Your Nonfiction. This is a workshop for writers by Catherine Lawton. I assume you're here because you're a writer of nonfiction and you want to learn how to breathe life into your writing. Then you've come to the right place. If you write nonfiction, it's for the purpose of communicating information, to teach something, or to inspire your readers. Your readers themselves, they want to learn in a pleasurable way. They want to relate to and engage with stories. And they care about people. That's what they care about and want to read about. Your readers these days are seeking experiences. They want to experience things, even vicariously. So in that case, what you need to do is tell stories, tell stories about people, describe experiences, then slip in the important teaching and the message that you want to get across. Doing this will improve your blog, your memoir, your article, your devotional, your nonfiction book, your interviews, your essays, etc. Now, what I mean by creative nonfiction is not what this sign shows. That way to alternative facts, alternative facts can be found in the fiction section. But when we talk about nonfiction, even when it's done creatively with, with fictional techniques, this isn't alternative facts we're writing. We're presenting facts, those things that really happen and uh, doing it though creatively with the techniques of fiction. Nonfiction instructs, informs, motivates, and it engages the left brain. Whereas fiction and poetry are artistic, they paint a picture, they elicit emotions, and they engage the right brain. So let's put those two together and engage your reader's entire brain with creative nonfiction techniques. These are the six um, points we're going to be covering in this workshop. First, character and dialogue. Number two, scenes, setting, and description. Number three, reflection and information. Number four, story structure. Number five, voice and style. Number six, poetic and literary devices. So in this workshop, I'm sharing with you what I've learned in 20 years as an editor, 20 plus years, quite a few, and a lifetime practically of writing. And um, using the book, You Can't Make This Stuff Up, The Complete Guide to Writing Creative Nonfiction by Lee Gutkind. I believe he's the author and the one who um, coined the term creative nonfiction. So I recommend that book. Now we're going to look at the first topic, which is characters and dialogue. Um, don't just tell about people in your nonfiction writing. That's easy to do. Just tell about what they did. Just tell about them. Tell us what they are. No, instead, show them. Show these people you're writing about, these characters in your stories or in your articles. Describe them doing things, show them saying things, interacting with others and with their environment, show them in their context and setting. Help the reader identify with them and care about them. I don't know about you, but I really don't enjoy watching movies or TV programs where there's not there are any characters that are really good or that I can really care about. I want to be able to care about my readers my uh, characters, both in uh, watching movies or in reading books. So um, 
do that for your reader so that they will keep reading. And uh, the cardinal rule, of course, of writing is don't just tell, but show. Don't just say, Jane was kind to animals. No, in your writing, show Jane rescuing a wild bird uh, from barbed wire, speaking in a calm voice while carefully separating the torn feathers. Another example is, don't just tell the reader, now this thing is good and this thing is bad. Show us why they are and how they are in, in real situations. Don't just say, your life will be enriched by prayer and expect people then to just go and pray. No, show uh, people who've, who pray about something and then how answers come and how it definitely enriches their lives. Show it happening. Um, that will be more motivational. So show how um, it works in someone's life. Um, then you want to use dialogue between your characters. Um, this brings a novel to life, certainly. Um, and it also is a device to use in your nonfiction writing. For instance, um, you could take a problem you want to deal with in an essay or a nonfiction piece and assign it to some characters, have those characters talk about that problem back and forth, discuss it. And this could really help you work out the problem and work out the solution to whatever problem you're writing about or coming to um, understand something. And it will help your reader also. At its core, fiction is about characters and how they live, who they are, what they go through in the course of a story. If a reader doesn't care about the character, why should they bother reading it? The same is true with your nonfiction piece or blog post. Um, if readers don't care about you as the main character or the other people you're writing about, huh, they can easily go elsewhere. If your content is dry and devoid of personality, people will click away or turn away. So don't just tell about someone, show them and make them unforgettable so the reader can identify with them. Next, we have scenes and setting, which is really important in um, nonfiction writing as well as fiction writing. Your scenes are your building blocks of your narrative. I put this picture here of my granddaughter in my vegetable garden one year when it grew to be quite a stupendous um, place. And she was in there in the tomato plants and my dog and the neighbor dog were there. And there's some tomatoes and um, other plants and herbs and i thought well here's a scene that has a lot of sensory appeal which is one of the things you want to use you want to appeal to all the senses and um a setting and it kind of um gives a mood too and i thought well this would be a fun little scene to describe if you want to practice describing a scene that of uh and using all the senses and using concrete details and always strong verbs. Um, scenes are the building blocks and your writing, your creative nonfiction should uh, be comprised of 50 to 70% of scenes. The setting, um, all books have a setting. Um, in, a, in fiction, your setting might be some faraway place like some other, um, planet for that matter or it might be ancient rome or it might be a scottish castle and those things give a sense of place um, it might help you to understand uh, the idea of setting uh, when you think of if you have a writer's blog if you have a writer's uh, website even well you usually choose a theme for your website or for your blog and that theme uh, conveys the tone of you and your writing and what you have to share. If you were 
doing a blog about, um, let's see, if you were doing a blog about true love, it probably wouldn't be a dark Gothic theme. <laughs> if you were doing a blog about um, sports, it probably wouldn't be a pink sort of foo-foo theme either. So that that conveys that's important, and a you know a um, book cover will also convey a certain tone before the reader even picks up the book. They get a sense of the tone of that book, or the subject of that book, or the setting or the feel of that book. Same with your writing, um, the words you choose, the the um, expressions you use, the format even that you choose in your writing. Uh, will convey a tone, it will convey a setting, and it will tell the reader something right away. Be sure to use uh, concrete details. Um, and in your writing, to uh, be effective, um, instead of using a lot of adjectives to describe, instead use um, a strong nouns words that help the reader visualize something. Use details that can act as metaphors. Um, I was thinking even in this picture here that um, the living plants can be a metaphor. Um, I think of how the trees and the leaves and the plants stretch toward the sun and reach toward the sun. And if you were writing about that, in a certain way, it could be a metaphor for we as Christians reaching toward the Son of God, reaching toward life and health and goodness. So that's just one little example of how you your words can represent something bigger. Be creative in how you seek, gather, and utilize information. We do live in a visual world, don't we? Um, details will set a mood and draw the reader in. As in all your writing, use the details and words that appeal to sight, smell, touch, sound, and taste. Moving on, we have the third aspect of fiction that we want to use to spice up our nonfiction, and that is reflection and information. This is not so much the spicy part. This is the part where you, that comes in between the scenes and that um, gives the reflection, gives the application, um, is kind of a breather between scenes. And is, this is where you can actually give information. You can do a little telling if you, if you want to say it that way, but keep it brief. I truly believe that in many things, less is more. And in this case, less is more. You know, do you like to hear preachers that just they say it, and then they say it in another way, and then they say it with a few more words, and then they say it with another picture, and then they say it with another scripture, and then they just, no, you want to just, just say it, you know, say it in an effective way, and um, there'll be more power in it that way. Same with your writing. Um, that you insert this part in between scenes and maybe at the last then it can also um, provide a transition and i'm going to show you an example at the end that will help you um, see this also how this works number four story structure the plot of a novel is the story that pulls a reader through the book to the climax the climactic finish and leaves them wanting more. On a small scale, every nonfiction piece needs to act this way. You want people to read to the end. So try to pull them through with a story and save your best information for the climax so that they stay with you. But don't disappoint them. Make sure you give that at the end. <laughs> Give them the information they've been staying with you to get. The order um, of this uh, structure that you use for your writing, it could be chronological or it could be by theme or thesis. But maintain, maintain a rhythm, maintain the momentum of, of this um, 
of the pacing of the writing. Don't lag in there anywhere. Keep it moving. Uh, and remember that every story needs a beginning, a middle, and an end. It might be very simple. This might be just one little story in the middle of your essay, or a couple little stories uh, in the chapter of your book, but they all need some kind of beginning, middle, and end. Often, and also in a good story, there is suspense and there is something at stake. The overall story or structure or frame uh, will reveal changes in people. It will, or places or objects. Sometimes it will be a journey, which is an effective story structure. Often you will use a chronological order, but it can start um, any place in the story and then go back with flashbacks, etc. But be sure to keep that rhythm, like I said. Um, finally, um, in your story structure, in your structure of your essay or anything else, um, it can be effective to use bookmarks where at the, something at the end harks back to something at the beginning, something that happened, something that was said. And this gives a feeling of completeness and satisfaction. This is also going to be something in our um, example we have at the end of this um, workshop pretty soon. So number five, we have voice and style. In this case, uh, it is your quirks of language that make your style or your views on life make really affect your style of writing and the voice that you use. Uh, Gutkind said, it's your underlying spin on reality, which I am calling your views on life. I think as Christian believers, we uh, have a certain view of reality. We have the view that reality is based on truth, that informed by truth, that what is real is what is true and good and beautiful. And um, it really does inform our style and voice in our writing. We can write with confidence. We can write um, as Christian writers, we can write about Christ and about the world and about hope. Oh, hope is important. We can write about these things in a way that is confident. We don't know all the answers necessarily. We can have questions, possibly even doubts at times, but we do have a subtleness in our outlook, a confidence, a hope, a uh, looking toward something uh, not only imminent, but transcendent that will affect our style. But each of you has a unique style, a unique voice not only a unique message that perhaps no one else can share, but you have a unique way of saying it, of sharing it that no one else has quite the same. And don't forget that in your writing, you are having a conversation with your reader. That's an, it's an important thing to keep in mind and it will affect your style of writing. Um, you're anticipating your reader's confusions. Um, you're anticipating their hesitations. You're walking them through unfamiliar ter terrain. You're assuring them that the journey is worthwhile. The journey of getting from the beginning to the end of your nonfiction piece, as well as the journey of life <laughs> is worthwhile. And you need to decide what is the best um, voice and tone to use for each piece, you know, for, for your topic. It may be enthusiastic, it may be gentle voice, it may be somewhat brooding, or it may be authoritative, which should sometimes need that, or it may be intellectual. As you refine your style and your piece of writing, do remember this last point here, that word choices really, really matter. Please remember that. Your choice of specific words can greatly affect reader emotions and evoke mental images. 
Choose your words with their impact potential in mind. Hmm. Know the power of word choices in eliciting emotions. Use words that express your exact meaning. Words that are precise and strong and evocative. Be alert and aware that there are connotations to words. Think about their connotations, not just their denotations, not just their dictionary meanings, but the meanings they connote. If you don't understand that, look it up. It's really important. Number six, poetic and literary techniques. These are things that uh, we use in fiction and literary work that really can breathe life into your nonfiction prose. They will make your sentences sing and dance. Here's a list of a few of those literary techniques. Allegory, symbolism, irony, imagery, allusion, alliteration, simile, metaphor, foreshadowing, wordplay, personification, hyperbole, etc. These things are fun to write, fun to use, and I really will bring your writing alive. Make it more interesting, meaningful, authentic, and entertaining. That's part of it. We all hope to get a little entertainment out of everything we read. Next, we have types of nonfiction writing that are that use uh, fiction techniques or types of creative nonfiction. There's the personal essay. There's the memoir. Uh, I think many of you are probably writing memoirs, your personal story. There's a short short, which is brief uh, vignette. Uh, the literary journalism that you see. Um, if you read any major newspaper, you're going to be reading literary journalism. Um, and the lyric essay is a fairly new genre. It's one that I've been learning about. and using i i have something coming out soon a literary essay a lyric essay i'm sorry which is quite poetic and uh it's going to come out soon in the book titled partnering with god so you might look for that i could um explain these a little more the personal essay is a piece of writing usually in first person that focuses on a topic through the lens of the personal experience of the writer. It should always be based on a true personal experience. The memoir, of course, is usually longer, especially book length, um, typically has multiple scenes and stories and examines the writer's life or important moments in their life. Ultimately, it should always be based on true personal experience also, and it's usually, but not necessarily in narrative form. The short short is a narrative work that's concise and to the point. It uses imagery and detail to relay meaning and uh, the main idea of the piece. Typically, it's only one or two scenes. Literary journalism, as I said, is what you're going to see in all the major newspapers these days. If, um, if a journalist is assigned to write about an event or to interview a famous person or even probably to redo a book they are going to probably use uh, creative nonfiction and do it with scenes paint a picture you know describe the person they're telling about and in the setting they're in and bring it alive so look for that look for all of these uh, forms in your reading and use try them in your writing now I have an example for us to read together. Um, this picture is from an experience I had as I was, um, I'll tell, you'll see about it in the story, but I actually took this picture and I've written this blog post uh, about that experience and it's entitled Attempting the Impossible. I'm going to read this with you. Um, it'd be easier if we were in person but we're, I hope you'll stay with me and let's look at this. I think you'll enjoy it. We were shivering in our ski jackets on the beach. 
that cold January day as I walked a stretch of the Connecticut coast with my son David and his family. A shrub lined curving trail took us over a hill and down over a tumble of boulders where we met an unexpected sight. A fit young man was bouncing his seatless bike from one precarious, precipitous perch to another. We stopped and stared. He was focused, concentrating, balancing with grace on giant, formidable rocks to the music of salty wind, lapping waves, laughing children, and calling gulls. He worked silently. David continued up the trail with his binoculars intent on birding. The children searched for seashells and driftwood in the sand. My daughter-in-law, Hannah, and I stood and watched the cyclist. He hopped off his bike and he looked our way. Hannah called to him, are you training for something? To be a better man, he answered without hesitation. Hannah blinked. Then she said, God bless you. I'm a stunt man, he explained. Just came out here to practice. He returned to his strength, agility, and balancing act. And Hannah and I enjoyed the show a few moments longer, then hurried to catch up with the family. But the image of someone accomplishing what seemed impossible with apparent ease and grace stayed with me. Like my grandchildren, since childhood, I've loved exploring beaches, forests, rivers, and meadows. I still do. And in those places, my imagination soared. If I had a book with me, all the better. Good stories opened a world of possibilities. I dreamed of writing a book, but to my child mind, that seemed impossible. How could anyone choose and balance and fit together so many, so perfectly that many words, make characters and places come alive? create meaning so believable and absorbing. To me, such a process held as much mystery as the thought of God creating the flowers in the meadow and the fish in the creek. But God does, and people do create stories and poems and write books. Life taught me, just as I'm sure the stuntman on the boulders had learned, that creative achievement requires diligence, work, and passion. The time came when I was preparing my first book for publication. It felt like trying to balance two narrow wheels on rugged, slippery boulders. I felt dizzy with inadequacy. At night, as deadlines approached, I cried to my husband, this is too hard. He just hugged me and prayed with me. Next morning, I woke with new courage. The book came to be and has found readers, opening windows of possibilities in minds and hearts around the world. The stuntman probably started working his bike on the pebbly beach and the winding, uneven trail before he ever mounted his bike on and negotiated the boulders. Similarly, if you have the passion and the vision, then the steps to carry out that vision will come clear. Maybe not all at once or as easily and quickly as you would like, but the path will open to you and the grace will come as you practice, learn, and keep trying. Along the way, you will have the opportunity to pursue an even greater purpose, like the stuntman on the beach. You can say, yes, I'm in training to be a better person, a person who listens to the wind, takes time to dream, to watch birds and collect seashells and to speak and write from the heart. Thank you. This uh, blog post you can find online at this um, URL listed here at my publisher's blog. My my blog as a publisher. Now I want to do a little exercise with you. In this blog post example story, which was a nonfiction piece written as a story, 
Um, let's look in there and see where did I use characters? Where did I use dialogue? Uh, what, where are the scenes? What is the setting? Where's um, the description? Um, where's the, where are the reflective, informative parts? What story structure was used? Is there a particular voice or style? And what poetic and literary techniques were used? Well, I would say as far as characters and dialogue, wouldn't you say that I was a character, that my family, the stuntman, and later my husband, they're all characters. And the first scene is on the beach where uh, later there's a little short scene with my husband. The setting is the beach, the boulders, the trail, uh, and at home writing. And um, did I use showing? Did I use telling? And or did I just tell? Did I show or did I tell? What do you think? Did I use uh, concrete details? What do you think? <laughs> And then the reflecting and information, it was in there between the scenes. The, the story structure, I guess you could say, was a journey. We started out, we faced odds in that journey with the cold and the rocks, and we encountered surprises along the way. Uh, we learned some things and applied some things to writing life. Uh, there's a conclusion with a lesson of encouragement. Um, it's framed with bookends. At the very last, I refer back to the stuntman's words about being a better man and that as we write, we become a better person. My voice, my style were uniquely mine. Now, if you wrote the same thing, it would be different. This story would have been different if you had written it, but it would have been yours. This is mine. You might have had the very same experience and wanted to write the very same thing about it, but yours would be different because it would have your voice and be written um, with your style. So don't, don't ever try to write like someone else. Become you. Um, if you do write, try to copy some other famous writer or, or be like them. It's not going to work. People want to know you. They want to read you. They want a special style just think of your favorite writers um you might be able to even think about them and hear in your mind in a sense their style their way of expressing themselves and you you like that you turn to all their books to to get more of that so uh work toward that yourself as an author let's look through this again and see where I used uh, descriptive words. I see one right away, shivering. And I thought that it was funny because I come from California and we were wearing ski jackets on the beach, type ski type jackets. Oh, we were bundled up and we were freezing cold, which that never happened to me when I lived in California. <laughs> but this was Connecticut. Um, I used some imagery there. There was a stretch of coast. There was a tumble of boulders. I used alliteration with precarious, precipitous perch. That's um, alliteration. I used allegory. There's the music of the salty wind, the lapping waves. And you could say I used um, sense of smell there, sense of sound, laughing children, calling gulls. And um, then there was action and dialogue. He jumped off his bike and Hannah called to him and he answered. So we used dialogue, which made it interesting, kept the reader involved and interested. And he said some surprising things. It was surprising when he called out. She says, what are you, are you training for something? Yes, to be a better man. <laughs> and I did some showing there instead of telling. I, I could have said Hana was taken aback or surprised. Or if I just told you Hana was surprised at his answer, now that would be telling. Instead, I said Hana blinked. Now, Hana blinking is like it tells you she was surprised. She was a little taken aback. She was just kind of speechless for a moment, had to process, process that. And then she came up with an answer. 
answer to him she said god bless you and who's who yes god bless anyone who wants to become a better person um then he uh, explained what he was doing and then there's a um A little more action and then a transition like my grandchildren this is where i go into some reflection like my grandchildren since childhood i've enjoyed exploring these places and there i'm bringing in concrete words uh, specific concrete um details beaches forests rivers meadows and book <laughs> and so um those are good strong words um, there's a little application there. Ask some questions. Asking questions is good for engaging your reader. And there's a little information here. I'm, um, to me, such a process held as much mystery as a thought of God creating. Again, here's some concrete words, flowers in the meadow, fish in the creek. Those bring pictures to your mind. But God does. He creates those things, and then and people do. And a little poetic language there is a little flow of poetic language. I could have just told these things, but I showed them. Then I kind of go into another scene where I say I was uh, preparing another book for our publication. So you know that I'm. This is much later it's a new setting and scene and yet i refer back because i kind of felt that same way <laughs> like um trying to negotiate these narrow wheels on slippery boulders i felt dizzy with inadequacy now that's pretty descriptive writing wouldn't you say <laughs> um and then there's a little more dialogue in actions my husband i said something to my husband and he prayed with me and then the next morning and so that is just a little bit of uh, scene and action and just so you see how that works how the um literary language is used even in a non-fiction piece and then toward the end i um hearken back to the beginning use a little bookmark and say um similarly um to the stuntman probably you know I, I, he that you will learn to be a better person there he is yes a person who listens to the wind there's more um imagery and there's also some symbolism in that because the wind is a symbol of the holy spirit so part of that becoming a better person and writer is listening to the wind which is listening to the holy spirit and observing life around you, being present to it. So there's some symbolism. Now, I hope that this has been helpful to you. I hope that you can see that uh, using fiction techniques that you would use in writing novels, uh, writing short stories, even writing poetry, that um, these techniques can improve your nonfiction. And just bring it alive, make it more fun to read, make it actually make it say more, can give it um, more layers, more depth, and give people more to chew on, more to think about, and, and keep them reading from the beginning to the end. Um, keep them engaged and also get across your point, get across what it is you want to say that is true and um, encouraging the lesson you want to bring across. and. We want to help our readers become better people. <laughs> of course, that won't happen unless we become better writers and better people ourselves. And then we'll be able to guide our readers into also becoming better people. Um, in conclusion, then, all the above will interest and involve your readers. All of these things, let me re just review again, um, using characters, dialogue, scenes, setting, description, reflection, information, 
story structure, voice, style, poetic and literary techniques. All of these allow you to communicate your information, insights and truths in an interesting way. You can work on shaping and structuring your piece, then hone in on the phrases and sentences after you've got the structure and the overall rough draft, hone in on every sentence, every phrase, um, and then rewrite it word by word, looking for word efficiency, word choices and clarity. I hope you'll take something from this workshop and let your let fiction and literary techniques breathe new life into your nonfiction writing. So that was my workshop and what I have to offer today. I thank you for joining me. I hope you'll take these points and use these fiction techniques in your nonfiction writing. I think it will help bring alive your writing.